A warm welcome to one and all present here. I am Dr. Sharvari Tamne, Professor and Head, University Department of Information and Communication Technology, MGM University, Aurangabad. I am thankful to the organization, uh, to the organizers for giving me this opportunity for chairing the training series one, Smart and Sustainable Applications, 5G Towards Smart Health. The agenda for the session is, I'm supposed to give opening remarks about the session and its proceedings. We have four eminent speakers to speak on smart and sustainable applications, 5G towards smart health. I hereby welcome Dr. Krishnan Umachandran, Dr. Joseph Lesko, Dr. Igor Jursis, Dr. Imran Aslan, Dr. Edwin Scaljo, and all participants. Dr. Krishnan Umachandran will speak on 5G as enabler to Industry 4.0 for 15 minutes, followed by Dr. Joseph Lesko, who would share his thoughts on ICT in healthcare, a view from the medical side for 30 minutes. Dr. Igor Joseph will address us on 5G technology as a locomotive for IoT applications, smart health for 30 minutes, followed by Dr. Imran Aslan, on smart health technologies during COVID-19 for 15 minutes. Dr. Edwin Scaljo will conclude the session with his expert comments on each topic of 5G towards smart health. After this, there will be an interactive question and answer session for five minutes. So uh, with the permission of speakers, I shall start the session. Uh, Dr. Krishnan, can I uh, share my screen? Please, ma'am. Yeah, is it visible? Yes. Yeah. So, um, my topic is, I'm going to uh, tell you about the role of wireless communication in healthcare system. Uh, since the beginning of the 20th century, an increase in natural disasters has been witnessed. These can be hurricanes, earthquakes, tsunamis, nuclear accidents, or pandemics. Each left a dreadful impact on human societies, particularly in terms of life loss, health problems, loss of infrastructure, or economic collapse. Even though great technological advancements have been made over the last few years, dealing with such incidents is still not an easy task. So especially the ones directly endangering human health, like the recent pandemic, that is COVID-19. The current healthcare system relies heavily on the uh, fourth generation networks, to enable smart health applications. However, due to limited bandwidth resources, these networks cannot support the rapid growth of these applications in the long run. Compared with 4G, 5G networks offer better services in terms of bandwidth, reliability, latency, and the other things also. So um, from the healthcare system perspective, the 5G services are providing the internet connectivity to the internet of medical things, uh, the, the different devices through massive machine type communications, offer high quality video calling for telemedicine and augmented reality or virtual reality for better visualization in diagnosis and treatment through enhanced mobile broadband. It can also support the drones and autonomous vehicles for both the surveillance and emergency scenarios with ultra reliable low latency communications. But these services offered by 5G are insufficient to satisfy the evolution of healthcare technologies as well as for the disaster conditions. So um, getting better healthcare from diagnosis to treatments is a basic human need. High quality healthcare must be available for everyone and everywhere. 
which is now possible with the development of smart healthcare applications. We can categorize the healthcare system into three major application areas like hospital environment, remote healthcare, and disaster response unit. Um, hospital consists of professionally trained staff and medical devices for providing healthcare to the people in the best possible way in order to run the hospital operations smoothly. Efficient communications between administration, doctors, medical staff, and patients is required. Commonly used technologies for interdisciplinary communication within the hospital are email, mobile phones, pagers, and two-way radios. So recently, new methods are also being used to improve the healthcare services in the hospital. For example, um, collecting and maintaining the health records electronically, uh, which can help in reducing the human errors, which can save time and improve the communication between physicians and patients. It can also um, introducing introduces the um, AI to make the better decisions in diagnosis, or we can also have um, involved different robots to achieve high precision in surgery, as well as supporting the medical staff. And uh, we can also have the internet of medical things, which can allow us, which can allow us uh, the wearable devices and sensors to send the data directly to the medical data collection center. Uh, remote healthcare is globally prevalent under current situations for providing healthcare to people living in rural areas and those with travel limitations. So this service is facilitated in two ways, telemedicine and remote health monitoring. In telemedicine, physicians use teleconferencing or check electronic health records for evaluation, diagnosis, and treatment of patients without physical interaction. Uh, for remote health monitoring, Internet of Medical Things technologies such as wearable devices and wireless body area networks have st started to be deployed extensively. In case of disaster response unit, it is actually a system that is required during the response to any hazardous or emergency situation to provide the healthcare services, which can include the disaster management centers, emergency mobile service, field hospitals, or monitoring public spaces. So when a catastrophic incident happens, a disaster management center is, can be established within a hospital or in a separate institution for rapid response, health services, communication between departments and monitoring the after effects. Um, emergency mobile service is also one of the most critical services of the disaster response unit to provide rapid response. And in case of emergency situation outside the hospital, it provides pre-hospital healthcare, either through the ground or air ambulance. So depending upon the severity of the emergency situations. Then smart ambulances are also there, which contain sophisticated medical equipment to improve the speed of diagnosis and treatment by taking precautionary measures, updating the medical staff through high quality video, uh, video calling and immediate remote consultation through the cellular network. It can also reduce number of patients taken to the hospital by providing healthcare through telemedicine. Uh, from the communication perspective, in a disaster response unit, several challenges have been highlighted. Um, and this, uh, we can say that uh, these are uh, autonomous ambulance and delivery drones, where the uh, high uh, mobility results in a large number of handovers is there, and which can increase the latency and decreasing the reliability of the communication link. In order to enable safe driving of these vehicles, reliable vehicle to everything communication is also challenging. Furthermore, um, in smart ambulances, the real time transfer of information collected from medical imaging requires high data, uh, data rate transmission. Likewise, the field hospitals usually lack network connectivity due to limited 
or unavailable communication networks. So these challenges can be overcome by the 5G or 6G technologies. And I hope uh, these areas will be elaborated by the speakers which we have. So thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, remote, right. Right. So we can go further now. Yeah. So um, please join me in welcoming Dr. Krishna Numachandran, who will be speaking on computing technologies and health enabled, enabled in Industry 4.0. Dr. Krishnan, throughout the value chain of production to marketing in beverages, pharmaceuticals, building tiles, footwear, medical, surgical devices, foundry, electricity, ERP, ITS, etc. Currently serving as general manager and guides the dispatch performance and EB, EBI TDA of India's largest gray and SGIN foundry with three factories having an installed capacity of 1,40,000 DPA. Dr. Krishnan continuously learns by attempting experimentation, innovation, and networking. His personal strengths include market and customer leadership and management, organization and building and development. Dr. Krishnan has a passion for research and has published more than 300 articles. I, I request Dr. Krishnan to address the audience on 5G as enabler to Industry 4.0. Over Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I'll share my screen. So, can you see my screen? Anybody can prompt me? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank yes, sir. you. Yes, yes. Everything's fine. Right. Um, as we are spread across the globe, uh, we have good morning, good afternoon, good evening all to our participants, because uh, we have people from uh, right from Jamaica to uh, Singapore. Uh, see, this topic which I'm going to uh, address today is going to be on the computing technology and health. Uh, why I named it as computing technology and health on a generic term is because in this, we are going to apply the internet version of mobile communication, which is called 5G network. Okay. When we want to use this, we should know where we are going to use this um, 5G network, okay? So I'm, I've uh, made a bigger picture for the total uh, activity. Like here, there are three parties um, uh, connected towards this discussion. One is the human being. Uh, he or she can be a, a, a you know, kind, of, kind of a patient or a, a person who wants to be in a better health. And then the second party to this is a function provider or a service provider or a manufacturer to pro you know, help this patient to recover or grow up with their health needs. And then the third party is the industry 4.0, the, the technology. See, human beings are to be taken care for their health by diagnosing, giving treatment, prevention of disease, injury ha handling, and their imp impairments. To this, we have the function being provided by a curative or a rehabilitative or a palliative or a preventive care by an industry through physicians. And then the technology which gives a better uh, reach through fast, secure, low latency connectivity, which is what the Industry 4.0 is requiring. As this Industry 4.0 is so lucrative, investing opportunities for Industry 4.0 is mammoth and a lot of people are investing into this technology. As we go further, you know, the, we, we told about the diagnostics and treatment. Diagnostics are done on the human being, whereas treatment is the one which cures the person to come out to, to the good health. Normally, we provide a formulation drug, you know, which is based on the bulk drug, which is the active key ingredient. Based on that, the diagnosing, curing, treating, uh, or preventing of a disease can happen. But for this, what we need in first term is the diagnostics. Diagnostics is nothing but determining the condition, symptoms, and signs based on the history or the current test. To do, to do this, what happens is the internet or the industry 4.0 has assured the physician with 
avoiding a second opinion so that they can have a reliable treatment based on re reduction in time for treating, I mean, for identifying or improving the performance so that a lot of people can be covered within a short span of time. This is the automation that has gone into diagnostics. But for this, there should be a seed. There should be a startup point. The startup point for these things were endoscopes, which were for pneumothorax and laparoscopy for the gynecological conditions. These were the most important in innovations that went in for minimal invasive surgery, or otherwise it was a cut open and uh, to cure these uh, surgical injuries or the sutures joining uh, for a better shape, it took a long time and uh, it also created a lot of uh, in a, um, uh, anti, I know, uh, viral infections. To handle this, we had to have antiviral uh, treatment and therapies were all associated with it. But today, you see the cyber surgery in place with uh, micro manipulators. You have the, uh, they are not only assistants, but they also have multidisciplinary team with surgeons, engineers, you know, exploiting the limits of knowledge, getting a better use of the technology, and providing a right solution to the patient. As these th things happen, what more important is the base on which these things are, I mean, are founded upon. Like the initial advancements in, uh, uh, in a medical innovations were with medical imaging and illuminations. Medical imaging came with broad lenses, solid state cameras, high definition video displays. All these were facilitating the minimal invasiveness. Illumination bettered with fiber optics. We had a lot of technologies with the video images and we also had the laser as a cutting tool to you know, get the uh, surgery done. In, in short, technology allowed endoscopy to realize its full potential in surgery. So when you want to get into the you know, human and get things right, you know, the endoscopy was the right option to, to do it. Later, what happened was a lot of principles of physics got into, into medicine. The light, sound, and radiation all found place into medical uh, you know, applications. It was for therapy like uh, tissue regeneration, pain management, con uh, and a control of inflammation using light or stress, uh, you know, uh, to relieve the stress from the sound, fewer headaches, and build in confidences and focuses. The radiations like uh, MRI, C uh, C uh, you know, CT scans, everything, along with I I IMRT, these were all used for therapy. These were the next generation of innovations that happened in medical field. Along with this, the antiviral uh, viral environment, which I said the inhibiting viral growth had an uh, impact through light. And through sound, we also had a sonodynamic antimicrobial uh, uh, chemotherapies. Then we had the ionization uh, of the radiation so, to, so that you control the antiviral or antimicrobial activities. Then we had the immunoresponse systems boosting up of it through reducing, uh, uh, taking care of the results of the nitric oxide from the human being, body, and then improving upon using the sound like listening, singing, and meditating, all the physical and emotional health was through sound. Radiations also reduced the tumor microenvironments and the target development through, through the agents, which created the uh, you know, um, healing delay. Many things of light, sound, and uh, radiations, along with the endoscopy, found a better improvement into medical technology. But today, we have Medical 4.0, which means it uses technologies like augmented reality, including the deep learning with oculogram, dermalgram, encephalogram, myogram, and uh, robotics, big data applications in, uh, in our medical fields, drone delivery, not only for drug delivery, it is also for transplanting of organs being moved from uh, various locations so that the patient uh, uh, you know, gets the benefit of quick delivery for a transplant. See, all these things happen not only for the human being, but there should be a support that is to be given. And that is where the industry or the pharma industry works on too. Pharma industry, though it has machines and it is being connected with PLCs and SCADA, it has introduced a manufacturing execution system in the early uh, 80s and 90s. But later on, in, uh, from 2000 onwards, it was more of ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning. Why? To monitor, control, guide real-time data with dynamic changes in the shop floor, use the material, machines, and resources and processes in a better way. For this, we had it. 
But then what happened was the industry 4.0, the current realm on which we are standing, goes on for automation and robotics for improving the proficiency or efficiency of the processes and the capacity. This is required only, only because there were two you know, pulls, error proof and future proof were wanted by the device manufacturer, which insisted the quality and the regulatory pressures on them so that you, you produce things of quality. So to get these things done, the preventive maintenance and the quality management, which were the, uh, you know, the folks on which the total industry was standing, were turned towards predictive maintenance and emerging technologies. So if you want to have predictive and uh, in a right time kind of a information flow, then means we need to go with ERP. So ERP is the one which is now re required and related upon. See, predictive maintenance when you want to have, it is more of information sharing through smart devices and collaborative systems. These three are required because they are the ones which are networking the firms and they take care of the consumer demand. As they do it, they have to have a self-diagnosis and predictive failure capabilities, optimizing the inventories, maintenance, spare, safety, and replacement of the requirement of a machine. So the machine has to be made right at a shorter span so that it can deliver and that delivery can reach the patient. So the collaborative system worked on more of an accurate demand prediction and for improved service levels and reliability, depending on the uh, you know, performance that is being ensured by the organization. Ultimately, everything went on for cost, cost reduction. So if you want to have cost reduction, you need to identify the cost of the problems and get your machine repaired properly at a quicker rate so that the failure prevention was given more importance. This is what is predictive maintenance. And for all these things, what happened was, because when an investor who invests on a pharma company, he wants things on to uh, be in place so that there's a movement. See, the machine, when it runs automatically in a, in a constant churn, it does not have a problem. But what you have to do is you have to observe it in a, in a, on a frequency, and then you have to measure things on a frequency, and then you have to control things on a frequency. For this, what they call as condition-based maintenance. This condition-based maintenance went on for three, I mean, uh, three grouping. One is called the real-time conditioning, using of big data, and then the timing and scope determination, which helped in this condition-based maintenance. If you want to have a condition-based, real-time condition-based depends on the remaining useful life of a machine. Because when you buy a new machine, it'll have its own efficiency and uh, in a process running. When it you know, goes with the wear and tear and depreciation, it, it has its you know, health being deteriorated. So the remaining useful life of a machine is identified through signal processing, machine learning, data analysis, and then the cycle and scope is being taken as a prediction to avoid accidents, failures, with a faster response and then preventing the downtime. These are the parameters on which the real time condition, time conditioning started getting onto. For this, what we have to do is monitor the equipments or parameters you know, you, on a continuous basis. Condition of the equipment changes. So along with that also, you have to uh, do your rationalization, then control your maintenance cost, component replacement, opportunity cost, and downtime. This is the things on which the real time uh, you know, real-time real, real condition monitoring happened. So for this, we need to have a lot of big data. Data, as you know, it's again, uh, you know, uh, warehoused. It, it is kept in a place, then it is computed, then it is uh, gone through with, a, you know, data engineering and then data mining. From the way you visualize the data, you investigate the data and you store the data. The database management in big data is called the uh, relational database management system. This relational database, when it is being used for processing, what happens is it is goes through various hands. So you need to see the process, the store, and the retrieve part of it. And then you extract it for the engineering part where you transform and load the data. And then you use it for a data mining where you can uh, extract, discover, and reason through logical, uh, you, you have patterns, you have opportunities and hacking. Then you call out the right data. If you have even the right data, what happens is the data is vulnerable to being used, misused, manipulated, or hushed. So you need to have a better cybersecurity system to prevent this data fall, from falling into hands who, from people who are not supposed to touch it. 
with all this, the big, uh, big data is then put onto log web crawler stream analysis because the data is not only in the form of text, it is also in the form of images and medical uh, field. Then you use it for analysis, not only for marketing, it is for the processes and for uh, all improvements. And then you archive. So this big data again goes through the pulverization of its requirement of need, and then it is also saved. The hive, the, the, in big data, we call it as a hive processing. Hive has three types of processing. One is called the acceleration, second is the index, and third is the query. The acceleration is you compile all the data, you compress the data and you keep it. Then you index it in the form of a storing or you form a store it in algorithms. Then you get onto the query part. The query part is the transaction or UDF where the user defined function using the data mining tools and the metadata embedment is being taken care. And then this data is being used for the uh, process of uh, culling out the decision. See, this is the technical requirement of a big data where a big data has a Hadoop as the inner, inner middle structure or the software, which is connected to the database called MongoDB, and then the um, conductor, which is called the scoop. See, this Hadoop is the one which is like your query language, SQL, structured query language. It works on processing all the data sets which are there on the hardware. It takes all the data, and then it goes on for the data application platform. The data application platform are nothing but language drivers. It takes the data modeling, replication, storage, all these things in a JavaScript object notation with hardware and machines. This application, when it is being processed, it is of a huge size. Does this kind of application be required for a maintenance of a pharma or a company or a pharma machine? It is required because the maintenance and service portions are the huge chunk in a budget of a pharma company or uh, in a, uh, for a manufacturer mm -hmm. support. So if you want to uh, protect, replace, re, uh, rehaul, or uh, remanufacture any of these parts, then you cannot be depending only on the OEM recommendations. The OEMs, they, they give the machine in a full form state, mm -hmm. but uh, as the uh, in a com uh, company runs or the machine runs, the, the OEM, the machine gets deteriorated. So as the specifications change, and also upon new regulatory implications, and to maximize the uptime or control the breakdowns or increase the life of the machine, you have to keep on doing your maintenance so that you ensure the machines are on good shape. So the scope for this, we are going to apply the augmented reality. The augmented reality is finding a place in maintenance. Why should augmented reality go into maintenance? You know, because, when the scope and the requirement is more for a particular function, which is going to be the chain breaker, then you have to apply the better, better technology. This augmented reality requires 5G. So now you see, what is augmented reality? Augmented reality is nothing but a wearable or a glass on which you project the, uh, you know, the machine or the um, picture to which the action has to be taken. For example, you have a faulty machine, the picture falls on the screen and you take the variable or the uh, in a screen towards the machine it, where the, there is a image syncing between what the, uh, in a, you have on the screen to the reality, then the line of sight of the real world connects the real the, uh, in a uh, computer so that the person who takes it, the operator gets the facility to be uh, used towards uh, improving the uh, uh, maintenance functioning. This uh, in, um, uh, AR, augmented reality, is nothing but uh, equipment with camera and a computer. It has the material uh, and maintenance guidance plan. It is transmitting the things in the form of a picture or animation or text to the operator. This is what is a function of AR. But if you can do it, it can help you in safe operating environment. It can reduce the time of your training. It can help your manpower become very skilled and your res resources are better used. So AR reduces the risk of equipment maintenance, improves the reliability and efficiency of the maintenance and repair. How? Because the equipment captures the, 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 the system captures the equipment through a camera and then it transports uh, transmits it to the computer so that the, and the processing happens. So there is an objective view of reasoning you know, that can really help. You know why? Maintenance is a tricky issue in any organization. Maintenance requires high level of expertise. 
it is years of practical experience that goes on in the person who is handling this function so ar should be in a position to integrate a lot of knowledge it should capture all the animation voice and text for a long time and then protect it so that that becomes the proprietary i in our know, knowledge resource for the organization this is being done seamlessly with manuals documents procedures and uh, you know so that you decrease the challenge it, it is normally like this if you want to know about ar ar is a head mounted optical transparent uh, display which has a infrared optical tracking as you go there is a optical tracking that happens and as you click on to the real um, uh, you know object then there is a step by step kind of a uh, input which comes to the operator that handles the maintenance task how does it happen you know see interactive opportunity control that is the more important part of a uh, in a ar when a operator touches the object from then on the syncing happens between the image and the real reality and then the you know menu card falls down onto the screen and then there is a location marker and gesture as he moves his hand the the uh, you know the the menu can be scrolled up and down so that he can pick the whatever uh, requirement is and then he can be aided with the support so the operation process becomes easy for this up to now in uh, throughout the world there are three types of gadgets which are available one i told you about the head mounted the head mounted has two options one is the optical see through or the second is the video see through optical see through is where you have a virtual on screen uh, on the whole uh, a virtual on the rear that is nothing but you have a image which falls on the rear whereas the video see through is where you have a video running through that goes on uh, you know uh, catching up with, with the rear these two are head mounted handheld goes on with perspective perspective means you would have done a perspective drawing in your engineering where there is a vision zero where the point of vision becomes zero and from then as you progress towards an object then you will come to know its real a real shape and size so like this the apply video perspective technology is on handheld on a space projection you have a 3d projection on virtual things these are all possible only when you have the 5g we all know 5g 5g all came up from you know we, we initially had a, 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 a 1g 1g was nothing but a, a physical uh, uh, gadget with, which handled the voice okay uh, which is nothing but a, okay uh, yeah, can you mute please uh, in a 1g 1g came 1g was more towards voice uh, orientation and then we had the second uh, in 1990s the 2g came 2g was using the digital uh, voice so this digital voice had a much amplification on the earlier uh, innovation the third uh, 3g came with mobile data mobile data did a further more escalation of its use then the 4g came 4g went on with more data speed we had about uh, which is called the mobile broadband which has about 1 gb uh, kind of a rate on which it can uh, you know stream and access then up to now we have in this um, uh, version of 2020 we are getting the 5g which is about 10 times higher speed than the 4g which is uh, up to 10 gbps with uh, 99% availability with 1 millisecond latency within a short span of a uh, quickness it, it gets to shape and it gives you a reliability these kind of uh, in a latency only can help in using ar technologies in medical uses so the right trade off between speed latency and cost is being arrived through 5g technology and the world for another 10 years is going to be running through this 5g technology okay with this i stop my uh, talk uh, thank you if you have anything you can uh, handle through the chat thank you yeah uh, thank you dr uma krishnan uh, dr krishnan uh, for your valuable words and uh, your knowledge so next we'll be having a keynote address by dr joseph lesko on ict in healthcare a view from the medical side dr joseph uh, lesko completed his graduation and phd from the school of medicine university of mostar 
He worked as a resident and ENT specialist, University Clinical Hospital, Mostar, and currently working as an assistant professor at Department of Anatomy, School of Medicine, University of Mostar. Dr. Joseph has published 10 scientific articles in indexed journals and two books in the field of human anatomy. He has participated in the organization of numerous scientific conferences. He has been awarded as the best assistant at the School of Medicine in Mostar in 2016, 2018, and 2019. I request Dr. Joseph to guide us on ICT in healthcare, a view from the medical side. Over to you. Uh, Dr. Tamane, thank you very much. Best regards to all of you uh, here participating in this webinar. Uh, my regards saying to you from Bosnia Herzegovina, from the city of Mostar. It's quite cold here. It's not usual uh, for this time of year to be so cold here. We are a bit surprised, uh, but it's okay. Soon it will be warm. Uh, well, you had a nice introduction for me. Thank you, uh, Dr. Tamane. And, uh, Thank you, Dr. Krishnan. You made uh, you made a nice uh, introduction in the uh, appliances uh, or the use of uh, 5G in uh, health or in healthcare, and uh, you told much of that in the, your introduction. I will nice I will now try to say it uh, uh, on a different way. And uh, how can we uh, how can we uh, increase uh, the speed of uh, information or also of uh, uh, healthcare uh, services uh, for the population, for the patients. Uh, Dr. Tamari told us, uh, I don't know, do you, do you see the presentation well? Is it okay? Is the transfer okay? Uh, yes, Dr. Joseph. Okay, great. Well, uh, 5G in healthcare uh, is, uh, we can view it as a, from a lot of aspects. Uh, from telemedicine to medical sensors, ambulance uh, to remote surgery. There are a lot of aspects where can we uh, use, uh, where you can we, uh, have a good impact of uh, 5G on the healthcare. Um, today, especially we have, uh, uh, we have a, a good uh, development of telemedicine. A good example is uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemics. As a lot of doctors were, uh, uh, try to work online. We had uh, um, problems with communication with the patients and we used a laptop, we used uh, smartphones and tablets and uh, it was kind of a weird medicine for us. Uh, where, uh, we needed to do that on that way because we were in lockdown. Uh, we had no uh, possibility to, to check the patients to uh, have a, a normal examinations. And we needed to, uh, to have uh, opportunity to do it on a different way. That's why the telemedicine had a big impact here in the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemics. And I think it's gonna be a future because uh, this 5G can increase the speed of information and it can give us uh, real-time support. As you can see, you can communicate uh, with the patients in the real time, you can get informations uh, uh, without lags, without jitters, we, you can have a uh, high resolution calls. Uh, you can uh, watch the patient, you can talk to him. You can even make uh, a uh, simple examination with uh, uh, telemedicine. Uh, we are uh, trying to do it uh, and still because pandemics is not uh, yet finished. We have still patients with, uh, with COVID-19 infections. In fact, I was working in a COVID-19 uh, unit for three times in these two years, and I had possibility to work with the patients on this way using telemedicine. It was a bit slower, but I think this uh, 5G network can, um, can increase the speed and we can have a uh, big impact on the communications. Uh, we can consult a lot of uh, different experts from uh, expertise. Uh, we can use uh, so-called telehealth consultations with the worldwide uh, doctors. We can have information in uh, uh, no time, we would say, uh, because the communication with the 5G is going to be uh, much faster. We can get information uh, now, in this moment, uh, without uh, delay, without lags. Um, what else? The, for example, this 5G will help us uh, to have uh, good uh, medical information transmission. 
For example, uh, big folders like medical imaging in, in medicine, because we are uh, using a lot of technology that have uh, uh, a lot of uh, 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 documents, or I would say medical imaging with a lot of memory, and we need to transfer it in a high speed. And that's why we need these new networks, uh, which will increase the speed of diagnosis on that way and the treatment, because if we have information about the patients, uh, about their uh, health information, like lab tests or medical imaging, we can send them in uh, any part of the world in uh, uh, fast, on the fast way, in a high speed. And that's why we can uh, we can have a diagnostics and uh, treatment in the uh, better way. And everything will be increased. Uh, these large uh, files, we can transfer it uh, within seconds. For example, I have uh, myself, I have uh, a lot of communications with uh, my colleagues in uh, the world, uh, especially with these uh, countries abroad, uh, near to Bosnia and Herzegovina. And uh, usually we are transferring files about the patients, for example, these MRIs, which are large to transfer, but we are trying on a different ways. And I think 5G will help us to have uh, in a few seconds transfer of uh, information. And that way we can, uh, we can help the patients in a um, much uh, faster way. Um, also, uh, in the medicine, we are using a lot of this new technology, uh, laptops, uh, tablets, and uh, uh, these smartphones. And uh, they are with us all the time. Uh, we will, in the future and even now, we will have uh, devices connected to the medical equipment. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we will, uh, we have also, uh, in our hospital, we have some programs which are uh, available for available for our smartphones and the tablets. We can, we can even, uh, we can look for the laptop test for some patients and we can uh, connect our phones on the uh, on the uh, application of the hospital. And that is also a good possibility to, uh, to uh, get uh, in the real time uh, lab tests, images of the patients. Uh, it is important for our hospital staff, for the nurses, for the doctors on the departments to have uh, in the no time information about the patients. And uh, it's important for getting the, the right treatment for the patient. So these devices in our everyday life will uh, help us to uh, have a good and better communication in uh, between. Uh, medical imaging in 5G is also important. Uh, for example, in this, I'm uh, referring again, again for the pandemics. Uh, for example, we had a couple of cases uh, where uh, the robot assisted remote imaging was facilitated. For example, you can see in this picture how the doctor is doing an ultrasound to the patient with the COVID-19. He's doing it uh, uh, with the program, uh, which is uh, robotly assisted in the other room with the robot. He is doing the ultrasound of the patients in the control room. So uh, the 5G will uh, help us to facilitate uh, such diagnostics, uh, which are uh, uh, which are today a bit harder to do. But uh, in the future, I think it's going to be um, in the no time. Uh, for example, this is uh, this COVID-19 was a good example. How can you use uh, diagnostics like that? And we have a lot of other uh, infective diseases, uh, not just uh, COVID-19, where we have uh, uh, problems with contacting the, the patients which are uh, contagious. Uh, also, medical imaging uh, uh, will uh, develop in the future and we will uh, have possibility to convert a lot of images. For example, uh, for example, MRI conversions uh, will be uh, uh, available with uh, special hol special holograms. We can uh, make it uh, with virtual uh, glasses like this one, and on that way we can consult other specialists when uh, they can uh, give us their perspectives on the human body, on uh, their uh, view of diagnostics and possible treatment. Uh, so this will be also one of the uh, one of the diagnostic tools, uh, which is connected to high-speed uh, networks, high-speed uh, facilitation of uh, uh, diagnostics. Uh, smart ambulance is also something which uh, is going to develop in the future. For example, in the ER ambulances, uh, we will have possibility to, to share uh, in the real time information to the hospitals, uh, to the uh, centers uh, where you have patients inside your ER. Uh, you can uh, follow their symptoms, vitals, and medical records 
uh, from the sensors and then you can send them with the 5G networks uh, 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 towards hospitals, towards uh, medical institutions and they can prepare for those patients what do they need for uh, diagnosing uh, those patients and to treat them. They will be prepared on the severity of their illnesses. Uh, so these smart ambulances uh, will prepare the staff uh, for the accidents, for the natural disasters, pandemics. Uh, you have persons on the on the place uh, of the accident, and you have the hospital staff in the hospital. They have uh, monitors. They can monitor patients. They can uh, consult the technicians on the on the field, and that way, uh, that, and that way, they can uh, have a proper treatment course, uh, and they can also monitor all the time the status remotely and uh, advise the technicians and uh, uh, the field staff uh, to give a proper therapy to consult them. So this smart ambulance is also the future and in some cities they're, uh, all, uh, they're already doing uh, uh, steps to, uh, to have these uh, smart ambulances. Uh, medical sensors uh, is something that I'm, uh, I'm doing in my, uh, my own uh, expertise because I'm uh, also a specialist for the sleep medicine and we are using uh, different wearable devices uh, for monitoring the patients, but we have uh, problems because we can't get uh, real-time information without the, the cables. We need to wire the patients on the bed, but in the future, I think we will have uh, these sensors that give uh, giving us uh, the wireless information uh, for the patients uh, which are in the distant bed, for example, in their beds and their apartments. We will have uh, this wireless technology is giving the patients uh, uh, with the GPS uh, uh, built in and give uh, 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 and give us the real patient uh, information about their health. Uh, usual apps we are using are, for example, monitors for saturation of the patient, uh, for the heart rates, for the skin temperature, ACG, uh, stress electrodes, and similar, similar like that. Uh, usually, these kind of appliances for the patients are uh, with the wires, and uh, we need to. Uh, uh, lock them on the bed uh, with the wires, but in the future, I think these sensors will send the information without the wires, without the wires, and uh, we'll have uh, no time or real information about them, and we can react in the moment for, for uh, the patients like that. Uh, so these uh, these wireless sensors sensors will uh, assist us in uh, different uh, perspectives of medicine. Uh, for example. Today, we have a lot of appliances uh, for the administry of medication, for example, like insulin pumps, they have uh, insulin sensors, they can controllers, they can uh, wirelessly, uh, for example, give information to the smartphones about the, about the levels of the glucose in your blood, and uh, that way you can give it a, a therapy in the right time. Uh, also, you can uh, assess the rehabilitation of the patient. Is it going well or not? You can have information about the, about the condition. Uh, patient uh, homes in the future, I hope they will be equipped uh, with the monitors. Uh, so we can uh, monitor some patients that are endangered, uh, their conditions are serious. We can uh, follow uh, their vitals, their symptoms, and we can have a so-called live streaming of the patients uh, in the home. They can they don't have to be in the hospital. So we can have a good follow-up in their homes and then we can react in the time when we have information on our, uh, on our smartphones, on our uh, laptops in the hospital. And we can uh, advise those patients to come in the hospital or to check for the therapy, give the therapy and things similar like that. Uh, the results of that will be a reduction of the hospital costs. Uh, we, had, uh, we can have a quick discharge of the patients. For example, if you have a, a home of the patients equipped with the monitors, uh, then you don't, have to, uh, you don't have to have a large uh, number of days of hospitalizing of those patients. And uh, I think usually recovery and monitoring the patient at home is better because patients have this psychological aspect uh, on the uh, their view of the, the health condition. So we can monitor them, uh, re, uh, monitor them uh, in, in a home. Uh, uh, remote surgery is uh, also future. Uh, I can say it's maybe it's today because I have a lot of consultations with my colleagues. Uh, um, well, most hospitals, most hospitals, I think in my country, 
uh, in the countries abroad, they have a lack of experienced surgeons. So usually we need to do consultations. Uh, usually these on-field doctors consult the experts. Uh, that, that kind of a consult, uh, consultation can be uh, with video and audio. Uh, and we call that remote surgery. So we can get information uh, in no time, uh, quickly. In the operating theater, you can uh, have uh, uh, direct communication with a specialist so that, uh, that are experts in their uh, surgical field. They can give information to the on-field surgeons what to do, what is the next step, what is the uh, good step for ongoing surgery. So if you have a good connection, uh, good speed, uh, you can have good information about the uh, patient status and you can uh, advise the surgeon on field what to do in the, the right moment. So the surgery in uh, Mostar uh, can be advised from the uh, surgery in any city in, uh, in the world and we can have a good result for the patient. For example, you can have our 4K displays for surgical mi mi uh, microscopes and you can, uh, you can watch the surgery, you can have a good transmission and you can consult the surgeon uh, in real time video and audio. You can tell them in small details what to do, where to cut, where to cauterize and similar to that. So the result can be uh, uh, similar to the result if you have an expert on the surgery in that uh, area on, on the right place. So that kind of a supervision will be better and the guidance will be good and uh, the hospital uh, can uh, save the money because they don't have to pay the experts or the patient to go uh, on a different, uh, in a different hospital or the expert uh, invite to come in their hospital. Uh, it, the consultations can be on this kind of a remote surgery. Uh, and in the end, uh, the future is this also, this is remote robotic surgery, uh, real uh, consoles with a, uh, equipped, uh, uh, with a special equipment. Uh, it is connected uh, with a uh, 5G network for, with the operating theaters. So the real experts and the surgeons can operate uh, with the robot uh, on the distance. And uh, that is maybe uh, also the future. Well, this was my last slide, and uh, I wish to thank you uh, for listening to this presentation. And if you have some questions, of course, you can you can ask. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Joseph. Thank you very much. I do have a question for you. Of course. Uh, do you have any feedback with respect to, you know, the, the success of treatments with, with your technology? Could you give us a story of a life-saving um, incident or anything like that? Sorry, can you, can you repeat the question? The connection is a bit slower. Sorry. Okay, so I know we have the technology, but do you have any feedback you can give with respect to success in treatments, you know, to save a life or prevent yeah, for the disease from happening or destruction inside the body and so on. Well, uh, the, the, the things that I was talking about, this is perspective. This is not reality now. This is sometime, something that we are, uh, we are going uh, to do, I hope, in the future. Uh, and on this way, we can save lives. For example, if you have a life-threatening patient and you don't know what to do with him, you don't have an experienced surgeon, you can you can uh, have a remote surgery. You can have uh, on-field surgeon, which uh, with his, uh, with consultations with uh, experts on the road. For example, a lot of patients can wait for the surgery and can't uh, be uh, uh, transported to the other hospital. We have a lot of lot of cases like that. A lot of cases, and if you have someone to help you to guide you to the surgery, then maybe you can have it. You can save the life, or the patient will die anyway. Unfortunately, we have we have a lot of patients like that. We have foreign bodies uh, in the bronchitis. Uh, usually, those patients are not for transportations. We have patients with the clots and the big blood vessels that are needing uh, the good uh, endoscopic surgery or uh, endovascular surgeries. Uh, but those are interventions that you must save the life. And we have so-called golden hour. If you don't do it, the patient will die and you can't transport it because it's a life-threatening situation. Unfortunately, in the cases like that, uh, this kind of a medicine will help us definitely. 
Thank you. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Joseph, for your inputs. Uh, next, you. we'll be having a keynote address on 5G technology as a locomotive for IoT applications, Smart Health by Dr. Igor Joseph. Dr. Igor is currently working on his final research regarding his PhD thesis analysis of eight key fields for telecommunication industry in industry 4.0 era. Dr. Igor has 28 years of working as well as teaching experience in various fields like Ministry of Inland Affairs, Department of Technical Affairs in Split, Croatia, HPT Mostar in Department for Investment in Telecommunications, Assistant Chief of the Department for Services, Head of Sales and Marketing Department in Fixed Network at HT Mostar, Head of Marketing Department for Business Customers, and he has teaching experience in mobile communications, digital communications, optical communications, and telecommunication systems and networks. He has also worked on various projects as a part participant and leader, to name a few, implementation of ion system, GPRS system, tariff models, and VPN system. Dr. Igor published many articles in journals, books, symposiums, and workshops. Thank you, sir, for being with us. I request Dr. Igor to address us on 5G technology as a locomotive for IoT applications, Smart Health. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, best regards from Oster. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, thank you for such a nice introduction. And uh, of course, it's not, it's not easy to say something new as something smart after these excellent presentations but I will try to say something uh, on different way. And my, my, topic, uh, my topic is uh, uh, 5G as a locomotive for IoT applications in smart health. Uh, I will try to, to uh, add my presentations on, on the... Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Uh, so can you can you hear uh, can you hear my presentation? Yes, yes, I do. Okay. Uh, the topic of uh, my presentation is uh, 5G as a locomotive of, for IoT applications in smart health. As I said, uh, it's not easy to say something new, but I will try to say uh, something on the different way from a technical uh, technical point of view. Uh, when I speak about uh, 5G in uh, in uh, telecommunications in uh, Industry 4.0 era. Uh, can you see my uh, following next slide? Because yes. uh, last time I had I had some problems. So uh, I always uh, okay. Yeah okay. Uh, uh, I always uh, like to compare uh, this new Industry 4.0 in telecommunications with uh, railway uh, composition. In that comparison, uh, railway embankment is equal to fiber optic infrastructure. Rails. Uh, are transmission technologies and systems. Locomotive is 5G mobile network and uh, wagons are different uh, IoT services and applications, over the top applications, cloud services, uh, anything as a service and so on. Uh, today, I will speak uh, mostly about locomotive, 5G, uh, 5G mobile network and wagons uh, based on IoT, uh, the, uh, IoT services and applications in smart health. Uh, fifth generation of mobile network and associated technologies meet many different requirements. On the first place, uh, 5G uh, must, uh, must uh, offer peak transmission rate greater than 10, 10 gigabits per second. Then up to 100 times more connected devices on the network than in the present, in the present systems. Uh, mass production and availability uh, sensors and different devices. Uh, longer services life of batteries and devices. Uh, Krishnan just told, uh, told that about uh, longer services life in batteries on his slide. Uh, uh, it will be necessary that the batteries uh, ha uh, have, have life for more uh, 10 years or even, even more. Uh, then uh, 
speed access for customers up to 100 megabits per second wherever it is needed. Uh, transferring more than 10,000 times of data traffic than in today's system. The delay of less than uh, one millisecond, high reliability and already 100% of signal coverage of the population and territory. I noted and I marked uh, this item, the delay of less than one millisecond because it will be very important and even crucial for smart healthcare in, in the future. All just uh, what I just said uh, is shown on this picture. Can you see my slide with the picture? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, many diverse, uh, uh, diverse trends on 5G networks. So we have unlimited experience. We have a segment for everything and uh, ultra, uh, uh, ultra reliability. Uh, these, these items that I just mentioned in uh, on, on my uh, present slides are uh, delivered uh, on these three segments. So we have 10 gigabits per second peak rate. We have 100 megabits per second uh, wherever it's needed. We have delay less than one millisecond alone and all other important, important, uh, uh, important uh, things. Uh, when we speak about wagons, uh, when we speak about... Uh, uh, IOTs, uh, which uh, will be connected uh, through a uh, 5G mobile network. Uh, we speak about uh, devices uh, connected to the internet. There are many, many definitions of uh, uh, Internet of Things, but uh, the most known is that uh, the Internet of Things is a network of physical uh, objects accessed to the internet, and these objects uh, contain embedded technology to interact with the uh, internal states or the external environments. In the other words, IoT represents uh, cameras, sensors, and other devices which are connected to the internet and communicate among, uh, among uh, themselves, directly uh, uh, send information to the people and receive direct orders from the people. All these, all these uh, items in order to meet human needs and to raise the level of quality of life and business. Uh, what is important for uh, IoT in 5G networks and for in all uh, business segments? IPv6 addressing is one of the uh, preconditions for exp uh, expansions, expansions of IoT. Why? Because each device on the internet must have its own IP address. It's, it is mandatory. It is necessary to urgently work on the implementation of IPv6 addressing at, at all levels on the internet. Why? Next slide uh, shows why. At the present stage, we have IPv4 addressing, and uh, it, it provides approximately 4.3 uh, times 10 to 9 or 4.3 uh, billion IP addresses. Uh, by uh, IPv6, we will have 3.4 times 10 to 38 different addresses. And if you compare these two numbers, it will be uh, clear why we need IPv6. Remember, each, uh, each camera, each, uh, each uh, sensor, each uh, IoT device needs to have or must, must have uh, its own IP address. Uh, when we speak about uh, different business segments, uh, this slide, this, this picture was dated from 2015. Uh, 2015, uh, people uh, saw many different business segments such, such as smart city, smart uh, home, retail, energy, uh, environment, uh, wholesale, and of course, smart healthcare. When uh, we spoke in 2015 about uh, smart health care, we spoke about variable devices and uh, uh, fitness monitoring and uh, health monitoring. Today, uh, we have a, a lot of... A lot of uh, different uh, services and products, and more than 100 different uh, products and services regarding smart health care. So uh, during uh, following, during the last seven, uh, seven years, smart health care uh, really enlarged and really developed, uh, uh, and it, it will be developing in, in following years much more than, than before. Remember the slide because uh, I will later say and explain some new services and products that developed during past years and uh, which uh, are in phase of developing in, in, in today and in following, will be in following years. Uh, what are the main effects of IoT? The, there are four key challenges to be addressed before mass deployment of introduction of IoT approach, especially 
in uh, these uh, top five business segments. And the first place, we have to choose real and correct platform for IoT. Uh, connect, uh, we have to find uh, uh, excellent way and uh, uh, connecting for devices, business model, and of course, applications but, uh, that uh, those will lead the massive usage of IoT approach, so-called uh, killer applications. Uh, more than ever before, it's needed to be creative and imaginative because uh, through creation of new products and services will be enlarged uh, usage of uh, sensors and cameras in smart healthcare. Uh, I always like to uh, show uh, this picture where Steve, uh, Steve Jobs said uh, that some people say, give people what they want, but it is not my approach. And uh, it's very interesting to see uh, the last three sentences People don't know what they really think. We have to show them. We have to show uh, uh, what we can offer them and uh, what, what will be new in following years. So uh, people from me medical, uh, medical part and from ICT part uh, really uh, must work together to develop new products and services and to show people what they really want and what they really need to have in, uh, in following years and uh, regarding uh, better quality of life and better quality of, of uh, uh, their, their businesses. Uh, when we speak about the main facts of IoT, it's important to see five, uh, five factors involved in the value chain. On the first place, we have providers of IoT uh, platform services. Then we have manufacturers of IoT devices or IoT device vendors. Then uh, network operators, mostly mobile telecom, but not only. Uh, we have companies or individuals uh, responsible to the development of IoT applications. Uh, and we have IoT service providers. Uh, this picture, this uh, graph present, uh, represent what I just said. And uh, IoT service providers, IoT uh, network uh, develop, uh, vendors, IoT device vendors, uh, IoT service platform providers, uh, mostly uh, reserved for, for big companies such as Apple or, or Google, or I don't know, some companies such as Vodafone, Deutsche Telekom, uh, AT&T or Verizon. But IoT application developers, uh, this uh, last box uh, are reserved for all of us. So I, I can see that uh, there are many students and the young engineers on this webinar. And uh, my advice to all of them is that uh, start thinking about new products, new services, in smart healthcare and work together on uh, developing of new IoT application application developers. Uh, IoT applications, IoT application developers uh, really will be will be future of uh, future for uh, especially young people and uh, to work together with big uh, companies and big uh, mobile uh, mobile telecom operators. Uh, also, when we speak about uh, main facts of IoT, there are three main layers in the architecture. Uh, we have a physical layer, we have a transport layer, and application layer. Uh, I will I will sp speak later mostly about application layer, but uh, this picture uh, shows uh, what I just said. We have a physical layer uh, divided in two sub -la uh, sub layers. We have sensors, devices, etc., and we have short uh, range communications, Zigbee, Wi-Fi, and some other some other uh, some other um, um, co connections. Then we have transportation slow with different gateways and uh, network, uh, mobile network, fixed network, internet, and so on. And we have application layer uh, with two sub layers, uh, middleware and applications that I just mentioned. So uh, when we speak about applications, we have uh, we speak about um, IoT wagons. And one of uh, the most important wagon in the railway composition is IoT uh, smart healthcare. So <clears throat> all of us, uh, for all of us, it's important to focus on the developing of new uh, new applications together, medical staff and uh, ICT ICT staff. Uh, when we speak about main business uh, segments uh, in IoT, on the first place at this moment is city management or smart cities, and after that smart homes. But very near uh, industri industrial Internet of Things, smart healthcare, and agriculture. So smart healthcare is uh, one of the top five uh, business segments for IOTs, and it's it's uh, very important to remember. Now I will say something about some special applications 
that will be uh, lead in, in the future and that will be uh, focused uh, uh, for for uh, for as IoT services applications via via 5G 5G mobile network. There are many examples of IoT uh, applications in medicine. I will I will uh, say maybe uh, seven or eight of them in these presentations. Uh, but it's very important. There will be much more in the future. Believe me, uh, as I read something about smart healthcare, smart healthcare and 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 uh, smart agriculture will be in focus in following decade uh, in the following decade uh, for developing of new. IoT applications and services. Creativity and cooperation between medical and ICT experts will be crucial in following years and decades. It is impossible to list all of IoT applications, but I will tell something. Uh, I will tell some of them and explain uh, their their um, their usage in in the, these days and in in following in following years. On the first place, uh, we have remote patient monitoring. Dr. Lesko uh, explained uh, excellent these these things, and uh, I will just uh, pass through my my presentation because I think this is very important to see what are main challenges when we speak about these new services. Remote patient uh, monitoring is the most common application of IoT devices in healthcare in, in healthcare in today in the, these days today. IoT devices can automatically collect health metrics uh, like uh, heart rate, uh, blood pressure, temperature, and more from uh, patients who are not physically present in the healthcare facility. The main challenge, major challenge, is ensuring that the highly personal data taken by IoT devices is secure and private. And uh, because of this reason, uh, because this security reason, it's very important that uh, uh, each device connected on the internet has its own IP address. Uh, other other application, other other uh, services, uh, glucose monitoring. Also, IT, IoT devices can provide uh, continuous automatic monitoring of uh, glucose levels. Uh, this approach eliminates uh, the need uh, to keep uh, records manually, and they can uh, they can alert uh, patients when the glucose uh, levels. Are, are, are problematic. Uh, two major challenges. Uh, IoT uh, has to be uh, small enough to monitor continuously without causing uh, a disruption of patient. And the other one, uh, IoT uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't consume so much electricity because if it is so, uh, it will need to be recharged frequently and it, it will be a problem for patient and for, for um, for uh, his his doctor, uh, heart rate monitoring uh, similar way. Conventional devices uh, for continuous uh, cardiac monitoring used in hospitals require patients to be attached to wired machines and constantly impairing uh, their mobility. IoT devices uh, can remotely monitor and measure heart rate. In this way, patients are uh, enabled uh, significant mobility and regular daily life. Uh, most modern devices uh, uh, used by, by IoT can deliver accuracy rates of about 90% or even better. So it's it's excellent uh, way to see that uh, IoT can be used for heart rate monitoring and that uh, uh, our patient patient uh, uh, can, can uh, live, let's say, normally. Uh, Parkinson's disease monitoring also, it's important to note how uh, the severity of their symptoms fluctuate through the day. IoT devices can make uh, continuously collect data about Parkinson's systems. IoT device gives the patient the freedom to leave their own home or to leave the hospital instead of having to spend uh, extended periods in hospital uh, for observation. Uh, Parkinson's disease is uh, uh, disease of uh, today and, uh, and uh, th these days, and I know some people who has Parkinson's disease, and I, I'm sure that uh, usage of IoT uh, will really help them uh, to live uh, live normally uh, and uh, leave their homes and hospitals more than more than now. Ingestible sensors. Uh, these are, let's say, future of uh, smart healthcare, but it's very important to show that collecting data from inside the human body is typically messy and a high disruptive uh, affair. 
IoT ingestible sensors uh, can collect information from digestive and other systems in a much less invasive way. Uh, they provide, uh, they, they can provide insights uh, into stomach pH level, uh, for instance, or help uh, uh, pinpoint uh, the source of in, um, internal bleeding. Uh, these devices must be small enough to be swallowed easily, and uh, they must also be able to dissolve or pass through the human body on their own. This, these uh, last uh, items are really challenges for for ingestible sensors. So these devices must be small enough and also uh, 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 also be able to dissolve or pass through the human body uh, clearly on their own way. Uh, connected contact lenses, smart contact lenses uh, can collect healthcare data in a passive, non-intrusive way. Also, they could also in, uh, include micro cameras that allow wearers effectively to take picture with uh, their eyes and whether they're used to improve health or or the for other purposes smart lenses promise uh, to turn human eyes into a powerful powerful tool for digital uh, digital uh, interactions robotic surgery dr lesko also tell, uh, told something about uh, that uh, by deploying small uh, internal uh, connected robotics inside the human body surgeons can perform a complex pr procedure uh, that would be difficult to manage using human uh, human hands robotic surgeries performed by small iot devices uh, can reduce the size of uh, of uh, incisions required to, for, uh, to perform surgery. And also these devices uh, must be uh, small enough and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, reliable enough to perform surgeries with minimal disruptions. Uh, this is also, uh, as Dr. Lesko said, uh, future, but I really believe this is, this is a very, very near futures and uh, this will help many people to, to live, uh, live normally in, and live a longer, a longer way. Uh, different types of uh, variable uh, biosensors uh, they enable to operate, uh, to operate uh, of virtual hospitals and other types of uh, care, disease prevention and disease detection. These devices, which are small and lightweight and worn on the body, uh, monitor vital signals such as temperature, heart rate, uh, breathing, uh, breathing rate, uh, providing health uh, professionals with, uh, with optical insight, uh, with uh, critical insights of the progressions and uh, of early uh, early uh, onset or, or an illness. Assisting the elderly, uh, of course, uh, the Internet of Things offers a number of uh, uh, potential solutions to this problem that allow that elderly, elderly people to maintain uh, their independence and still getting uh, the assistance they might need in, in emergency. Uh, they can alert a uh, caregiver Caregiver, if there is a major change or if it's not a uh, movement is detected uh, for an abnormal uh, amount of time. So there are many, many, many uh, other IoT applications in smart healthcare. I just uh, uh, noted and listed several of them. Many of them are still in a developing phase and uh, very important to, to know that 5G IoT Cloud computing and artificial intelligence together will, uh, will bring many new solutions for better healthcare. Uh, it's important to know that smart healthcare together with smart cities, homes, uh, and smart agriculture will be one of the top five business segments in, in the following uh, decade or decades. And uh, so my advice to all young engineers from ICT, ICT segment, start thinking about developing uh, new new products and services from this, this business segment. 5G technology will be the locomotive for smart health services. Uh, 5G technology satisfy all issues for new services uh, that I just mentioned in this IoT business segments. Together with cloud computing, together with artificial intelligence, together with IoTs, uh, 5G will bring new uh, products and services uh, on higher level in order to meet human needs. Increasing demands of development uh, of uh, new sophisticated IoT services will be uh, accompanied the development of, uh, of mobile telecommunications. 
in the turn of development and implementation of a new generation of uh, mobile networks, 6G around uh, 2030 and 7G mobile network around 2040. This was my presentations. Uh, thank you for your attention. This is my uh, data. This is my connection data. So if you have any questions, you can say uh, ask now, or you can send me by email or by my 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 profiles. Thank you for your attention. Thank you all. And uh, uh, it's really not easy to, to say something new and say something uh, smart after after previous presentations. But uh, I just wanted to say something. Uh, different uh, from a technical point of view. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Igor, for enlightening us with your knowledge. We'll be having a third keynote address by Dr. Imran Aslan on smart health technologies during COVID-19. Dr. Imran Aslan is currently working as an associate professor at Bengal University Faculty of Health Sciences. He has published more than 40 international articles in SSCI, ISI, Scopus Index journals. He has published five books and 11 book chapters. He has specializations in healthcare, optimization performance, health management, mobbing, supply chain management, operation management, halal foods, AHP fuzzy logic, Gray Relational Analysis, Industry 4.0, Social Media, Mental Workload, work stress, work stress, Burnout Studies, Mental Wellbeing During COVID-19, Distance Education, Occupational Health and Safety. We are very fortunate to have you here, sir. I request Dr. Imran Aslan to speak on Smart Health Technologies During COVID-19. Over to you, sir. Hello. Okay, yeah. uh, wait. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I want to thank everybody for their presentation, and uh, actually they have uh, and the listener also. Uh, they are welcome. Uh, they uh, the other uh, friends they have already mentioned about the smart health technology. So some partly I will go to quickly in some parts, and I will try to. Uh, make some uh, wait. So especially during the COVID, uh, we have seen uh, many application of uh, healthcare, especially uh, smart healthcare uh, during the COVID-19. And the, we have seen that the these technologies are mainly used for uh, self-monitoring because the people, uh, they need to be quarantined, they need to be in quarantine. And during this quarantine time, uh, whether they uh, they stay in their uh, place or not, uh, whether they uh, there are other people uh, they contact with them, so this kind of the data are needed uh, for the preventing the the spread of the COVID nineteen contact uh, tracking, especially when the people uh, they go outside, uh, and if they meet somebody uh, had COVID. Uh, that means they are potential uh, carry of uh, COVID-19 virus, and uh, they need to follow this uh, movement of the people and remote care. Uh, they have already mentioned in the uh, presentation before that uh, the remote care is becoming uh, slowly popular in, uh, especially by providing the uh, costly, I mean, che cheaper methods and uh, in the place the people, they cannot reach the, uh, experts uh, for the surgery and all other kind of things and hand-free measurements especially you know the COVID when the people they touch something uh, they can get that virus and uh, the technologies are developed in this way uh, and they they found that uh, they need a, a kind of increased security and consistency uh, with the data because uh, the data accuracy is uh, an important uh, for the um, for the make the analysis and make uh, giving the public uh, information uh, vaccine developments, uh, especially many people, they uh, you know in the beginning of the COVID, they combine the, the their database and uh, they support uh, their technology with each other to make a, a quick uh, vaccine uh, to uh, against the COVID-19. And uh, as, uh, during the COVID, the people uh, they main, ma many people uh, they worked from the home, 
and uh, so home working and their uh, things. So the technology they are mainly used during the COVID-19 uh, used for these purposes. And the, the, the World Health Organization, uh, uh, they try to make uh, this connection together. They uh, support this, they try to make uh, the criteria or support standards and uh, this, try to distribute these uh, technologies or data with other countries or combine their system together and they uh, to uh, decrease the load of uh, COVID over, over the people. So, uh, so diagnosing treatment, preventation of diseases, illness, injuries, all the things uh, are uh, supported in this system uh, and the, their data are connected because the, the effect of, you know, there is a variance in different kinds of the countries and uh, it is uh, need a strong collaboration among the countries. And it is not that this, this new normal will be uh, part of the uh, all future life because they have seen that these methods are efficient, especially to follow, to, to follow the peak for the contact tracing and uh, mainly to decrease the cost. And you know that is the health is a costly thing. And they found that it, with this technology, they can handle many cases cheaper uh, uh, when compared with traditional face-to-face -face, uh, healthcare. So many things now they uh, try to make uh, online like telehealth. Uh, I mean, the people they can get the, their prescription or their uh, they can tell their symptoms to doctor over telehealth and uh, they don't need to go to the hospital. So uh, this is the uh, the beneficial. So as we see that the, the technologies that uh, or my friends, they mentioned in the previous uh, uh, presentation are here, but uh, uh, when they when we combine these technologies like big data, internet of things, mobile internet, artificial intelligence, 5G technologies, uh, they can be used for information delivery, screening, uh, risk assessment for the regions, tracking people, uh, making diagnosis, especially during the COVID, you know, the chest is uh, important. And when there is a COVID virus in the chest, in the lungs, uh, there are some uh, smart technologies that they can uh, find it and they can uh, give both better results and the telemedicine so the, the they can uh, give the benefit of detection i mean detection of the covid uh, because some people uh, even they have the covid uh, this the, their symptoms may may not be uh, may not be enough to determine whether they are uh, covid or not so the uh, the accuracy of detection can be increased with these technologies early response uh, can be done intervention uh, can be done post intervention and so uh, like uh, and the uh, they can uh, provide the isolation and the care so here the the key point during the covid how to provide the isolation and how to make the care especially many people uh, that they have a chronic illness they couldn't go to the hospital so uh, we have these technologies like uh, mobile phones or other technologies uh, they try to reach these people uh, and uh, continue their uh, treatment as you see, a smartphone here can be enough. Uh, and if you have the enough sensors uh, that I mentioned by uh, my, friend, uh, my other friend, uh, that these sensors can be used and this uh, all data can be combined in a smartphone. And if they are supported by this artificial intelligence or Internet of, uh, uh, Internet of Things and cloud computing, so the, the, the self-treatment of uh, their illness and self-management of uh, symptoms uh, can be done and which is uh, necessary during the COVID. As we decrease the traveling times, that means uh, we can decrease the, sp uh, the speed of uh, spreading uh, uh, of the virus. So these technologies uh, was seen that they uh, have been seen that they are beneficial and uh, they are not causes. So for diagnosis, especially like I told you, the computer tomography uh, that can be uh, give better results and the uh, to increase the uh, security of the uh, and the accuracy of the things of black check technologies and the for the artificial intelligence self testing and tracking system uh, can be applied. Uh, uh, this can be uh, beneficial for the, the uh, diagnosis of the COVID-19. Uh, the preventation and surveillance. Uh, this is the especially when the quick response. And the code screening, you know, the people even they are, they have the COVID virus. Uh, sometimes they travel uh, even they don't have it as a bad uh, symptoms. I mean, they go out and they may uh, go shops or they may travel in the public transportation. And these people need to be uh, detected. 
uh, if they, 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 they are the potential to spread the, the COVID virus to the other people. So they like the quick uh, response or code screening can be applied in every kind of show, the universities on the other part, public governments. And uh, like the WeChat used by Chinese uh, to follow the people, I mean, uh, in their phone, and at least they can uh, found their movements where uh, uh, where they have traveled, uh, whether they have the uh, they have been in in closeness any uh, potential COVID nineteen uh, person. Uh, so uh, the other one is the electronic personal protective equipment. Uh, they use it by especially workers in the case uh, uh, to prevent them. Uh, for the prevention and surveillance and the treatment and address as, uh, as uh, telemedicine and telehealth uh, they, this uh, have been uh, used, uh, used in some countries slowly and uh, the adherence of a patient with uh, these codes and sensor and video images can be used whether they take the medicines or not whether they follow the rules or uh, whether they do uh, uh, they they eat they, uh, they 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 eat or their their condition are in good uh, uh, situation or not. So this kind of uh, things that can be used to follow the people in this manner, lifestyle and pa patient engagement. As, uh, so remote obesity management uh, through telehealth and mobile methodologies can be used uh, to create a healthy lifestyles and to make uh, to follow day kilos. Uh, to do sport and to get uh, support from the experts uh, that uh, uh, so the the technologies is, uh, like uh, especially the some application of that uses around the world uh, as you can see in this here and many countries uh, so the keeping distance uh, using the information uh, using scheduling in the hospital uh, like the location and uh, stay at home, uh, have to detect uh, whether they stay at home or not, uh, making prediction about the number of the COVID cases, uh, autom autom uh, automation, like uh, using robots to make the test or to take, uh, give the samples of the uh, patients from uh, to the hospital. So this for this kind of things, like Zigbee is a wireless technology, used, Bluetooth they use, uh, they use ultra wideband cellular uh, RFD technology, Wi-Fi, and the other technology used to uh, develop this uh, real-time monitoring uh, to detection and to, to uh, follow. So this is the technology used around the world. As you see, many countries uh, they use this so this logic uh, to uh, during the COVID-19. Uh, but what I have seen, especially in China, they applied uh, these technologies uh, very beneficially uh, by following the people, by using this uh, uh, mobile, following this GPS uh, mobile technologies or uh, detection, especially they use the cameras uh, in the streets or in the, uh, in the train station and the people, uh, if there is a, an uh, increase in their temperature or whether they show any kind of them symptoms, this technology can detect people uh, uh, who ha may have the COVID-19 and uh, especially to follow the people during the quarantine times, uh, the need, people need to be followed. In the case uh, they can use uh, wristbands, uh, every, uh, this kind of things, or uh, uh, sometimes when the people, they need the information uh, how to, uh, about what to do, uh, when to carry out the test, uh, when, when to go to hospital, this can, kind of information also can be sent to the people and the, whether when the people they are coming from other cities or the other countries also can be uh, followed this, uh, with these technologies. So the main aim is uh, clear, uh, have to uh, decrease uh, the, the spread of the virus and these technologies, as I told you, uh, very use it in China very effectu efficiently in the uh, North uh, in North Korea uh, so, sorry South Korea and in Japan in this kind of countries they use this technology very beneficially uh, in some Latin countries also in the Chile they use this kind of technologies in Turkey they also applied uh, this but uh, we haven't used it so much uh, thermal cameras. But we try to use especially the uh, tracing, I mean, uh, to follow the people, whether they obey the rules or not. 
and uh, we use some, some, some software to give the information about the daily region, uh, about the, the rate of COVID in these places. Uh, uh, so the, the, these technologies, uh, when seen, uh, they, are, they are beneficial. And the, there are some challenges of the, these technologies. Uh, the privacy is, again, is a, is a general, uh, uh, I mean, the, in all technologies, is a problem bias, uh, especially in detecting the illness and these uh, codes and algorithms, whether they, uh, they can be changed, whether they can give the uh, right, uh, right, at, uh, right answer to the right, uh, uh, right detection. Infodemi, I mean, uh, this is an, uh, another problem, uh, but this can be uh, solved if, if there are filters uh, or if the source of information uh, could be controlled, maybe uh, wrong. You know, there are lots of theories during the COVID-19 and the people, uh, they were afraid of these uh, theories, whether the, the end of world come or all the people will die or millions of people will die. So uh, it, it was seen that this uh, infodemic information need to be controlled and uh, more accurate uh, information should be sent to people because uh, the social media, uh, the social networks can, cannot be controlled, but at least there's some, uh, some trustable source of uh, information could be created and the people, if they uh, can trust this uh, source of information, uh, it may decrease their fear uh, and, and uh, then uh, these things. The QR code challenges, I mean, uh, um, sometimes the people, uh, for example, they can give their phone to another person uh, or uh, they can put their home at home and they may go outside. Uh, so uh, they can, this, this kind of technologies can be misused. So the, uh, this is another that, uh, challenge that need to be considered. Uh, internet quality and uh, there are some other challenges uh, that uh, were, were met during the COVID-19. So the conclusion, uh, as I said, this, this is the, uh, they see these technologies, they are very ben beneficial, especially the China case. Uh, they could, uh, even the beginning of the COVID uh, was uh, this country. Uh, they were used, uh, they have used this technology very efficiently. Uh, what was seen that in Western country, especially, uh, but uh, they used the open data and the, uh, Open, uh, I mean, the willingness. I mean, uh, the people, uh, uh, for example, they don't force the people for, for sharing their uh, location or this kind of things. But in China, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they made, they, they used the sensor ships or they, uh, uh, they were more harder on these uh, policies and obeying the rules. So there are a uh, difference between Western countries and the China at using these technologies. Uh, so the, the strong centralization in administration uh, was seen in China and it, is, uh, it was seen that it's a, a beneficial. Uh, in Western countries, uh, they, they, are, they don't have a, this strong centralization and there is a lack of coordination uh, among Western countries because they apply different standards and philosophies. Uh, so the, the people uh, using these technologies uh, and especially to make in the vaccine or to train the people to follow the people when compared the 100 years ago the Spanish flu they are uh, they are they are, they are really beneficial. Uh, so these technologies uh, and innovation can be uh, used to increase the capability of humanity to fight against the outbreaks and uh, make the people more resilient resilient against this kind of uh, new outbreaks or still the current COVID-19 outbreak. Remote healthcare management and control, strong collaboration at national and international level, and develop prediction capabilities for the outbreak to plan the resource are the key actions against the COVID-19. And this uh, pro uh, new agile uh, innovations like producing medical ventilators, uh, produce uh, and hand sanitizers in short time, uh, new solution uh, of different kind of mask shield corroborating for surging uh, NIF uh, vaccine are uh, there uh, other example of uh, during the COVID-19 uh, uh, the, uh, during these times. So this is the my presentation uh, have a limited time. If you have any kind of questions, I can answer. Uh,
the technology uh, did very good job for during the COVID nine time. I, I some countries actually they couldn't uh, able to use maybe due to this infrastructure or maybe uh, due to this uh, economical uh, situation. But the countries who uh, countries apply these technologies, they uh, they get uh, really good advantages. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Imran, for- uh, You're welcome. Yeah, so it was very uh, informative presentation. Uh, now I would like to invite Dr. Edwin Scaljo for the validity session. Uh, Dr. Edwin has more than 20 years of experience in telecommunications. He received his PhD from the University of Tuzla, Bosnia, and Herzegovina. Dr. Scaljo has held several management positions at BH Telecom, the leading telecom operator in Bosnia and Herzegovina. He has pioneered the implementation of numerous projects and new services in the field of fiber optics, communications, and related broadband technologies. He is the author of many international presentation in, presentations in this field. Dr. Scaljo is also an associate professor at the University of Sarajevo and an associate editor of the International Journal Fiber and Integrated Optics. He is president of the Professional Association of Electronic, Automatics and Telecommunications Engineers of the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. In addition, he has served as chairman of the International Workshop on Fiber Optics in Access Networks since its founding. I request Dr. Edwin, to address us. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank, thank you very much for your interviews about me. Uh, thank you for the nice presentations. I, I enjoy, enjoy the, uh, to, to learn and uh, to listen about uh, health and uh, about 5G. I want to uh, make some, some uh, remarks or some conclusions uh, what I heard and uh, where, where, where we think that 5G uh, is very, very important. Uh, on the first presentation, we heard the challenges uh, where we uh, need uh, a la large number of handovers and uh, 5G network will resolve it, uh, we are sure. Uh, also, uh, <clears throat> Uh, we know that uh, for transport of, uh, of our patients uh, uh, need 99% uh, 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 of uh, connect connectivity and uh, more than 99% and 5G uh, offer, offer, it, offer it. And uh, also uh, Professor uh, Krishna uh, mentioned, mentioned, us, uh, mentioned us uh, about industry for industry 4.0. Uh, where we, uh, where he mentioned, where he made made, made uh, one uh, connection between uh, human health care, about human care industry, and about engineers, yeah, uh, and about uh, uh, again about uh, high speed network, uh, and uh, where, where, we, where we must have a, a big. Uh, Overlapping of these three 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 types of different different society. Then, uh, yes, um, he mentioned that uh, yeah collaboration team uh, that's where we are surgeons, patients, patients, and engineers. And uh, I, mean, I I I I wrote this. Uh, this is also very important. Uh, also. Uh, uh, expect uh, 5G network like uh, like fast network at low latency latency network. Uh, very easy, very important. Uh, uh, we we heard uh, to have a high quality video and the high quality imaging, yeah, imaging. Uh, and uh, but uh, never mind if we have a good camera and if we have a very very fast network, we need illumination in uh, inside of a body. Uh, and uh, he mentioned that we can provide it by, by fiber optics, uh, and uh, this is uh, also very important. Uh, he, men he mentioned uh, medical 4.0, uh, where we uh, saw that then uh, drones, uh, big data, robotics, uh, and uh, he explained, uh, and uh, <laughs> also I heard uh, two very important uh, terms, uh, 
prevention, preventive maintenance and predictive maintenance uh, in medicine. And uh, these uh, two terms will uh, make a cost reduction. Uh, and uh, also during uh, all, all, all presentations, uh, we heard that monitoring in real time conditions is very, very important. And again, 5G network will resolve, re will resolve it. Also, we heard that, that uh, regulation requirements is, is very important in, in medical. We cannot make uh, just uh, engineer, put uh, all engineer uh, uh, to care about our patients. Uh, as uh, he mentioned, uh, that we must have a team, must have a team. And uh, we saw uh, big data coordinates that uh, this is uh, very, very important to have uh, a right decision. Uh, uh, also, uh, yes, uh, and uh, during all presentations, I asked, and then we heard uh, Josip uh, from Bosnia uh, about his experience during the uh, COVID, uh, COVID uh, uh, pandemic inside of uh, Mostar city. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, again, we heard uh, that a high resolution call is very important. Uh, telehealth tele uh, uh, consultations uh, during the pandemic. I know yes, uh, is uh, from my country, and uh, I know how it was, uh, how it looks. Uh, uh, look in our country, uh, uh, we make a con uh, consultation about COVID. Uh, and uh, he explained that the large file transformation we need, we need again 5G will resolve, resolve it. And very, very important uh, uh, is robot assisted uh, in re remote uh, ima imaging, in remote imaging. Uh, he mentioned that smart ambulance and uh, what we heard at the beginning of this workshop. Um, and uh, again, medical sensors. Uh, many of them are wireless, uh, are wireless, and uh, will uh, make uh, will, uh, uh, will help us uh, uh, in uh, me medical medical uh, for zero. Then we heard uh, Professor uh, Doctor Jurčić. Uh, he spoke about. I, I, he made a good introduction about the 5G network and explained us uh, bit rates, uh, 10 gigabits per second, uh, the, about the delay, uh, delay, and that he, uh, he provide uh, Internet of Things definitions, definitions of the Internet of Things, uh, and explained that uh, V6 is very important, very important uh, for uh, for. Uh, IoT uh, big implement, implement big rollout out uh, in IoT is uh, we cannot we cannot imagine uh, without uh, IPv6. Uh, also, she provides some many many facts about about IoT IoT uh, and uh, he very, made a very very good uh, layers about application middleware network. Uh, get a access, uh, short range communication, communications, and uh, finally sensors, sensing of sensors uh, on physical layer. And uh, he may mention uh, us many, many uh, glucose monitoring, uh, 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 remote patients, uh, patients monitoring glucose, heart rate, and Parkinson, and many, many things. As he mentioned, a uh, smart contact lens. Uh, and uh, we saw uh, yeah, from uh, all presentation, also we had a uh, very good uh, presentation from Professor uh, Imra, also speak about uh, COVID-19. Uh, and uh, he explained uh, that it uh, changed uh, almost all our uh, uh, expect, uh, aspect of our, uh, our lives. And uh, he mentioned that uh, uh, technology saved a lot of a lot of uh, lives. He put uh, uh, provide us a challenge of smart technologies, privacy bias, uh, QR code challenge, and, and internet quality. Uh, I mentioned uh, from the last that he he found found uh, the Spanish flu. 
uh, was discovered 15 years after uh, appearing, but uh, COVID uh, was di discovered uh, in weeks uh, after uh, after appeared appeared. It it, is, it was very very interesting. In any case, I can uh, I can conclude my, my speak uh, that uh, uh, <laughs> I can conclude that uh, uh, medical heart, medical care. Uh, as uh, someone mentioned, uh, that is uh, very important to combine engineers, patients, uh, and the health uh, and the medical uh, knowledge and make uh, a 5G network uh, will uh, really uh, help us. Uh, and uh, something uh, what, what uh, will uh, make a big progress in the medical, medical So uh, thank you, thank you uh, for all speakers. Uh, I enjoyed really. Thank you, Dr. Edwin, for your expert comments. Now this session. Yeah. John Fred. Uh, go ahead, uh, Dr. Tamina. Yeah. So now the session is open for question and answers. I request all the participants, if they have any questions, please feel free to ask. Or you can type your questions in the chat, bo chat box also. Any questions? Any queries? I have a question. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, I think in healthcare education, the technologies would have been useful, but we, we did not hear very much um, about how it has been used in healthcare. And I know we had um, two or three pre presenters who actually are from universities. So could you share how the 5G technology has been used in education? That's for healthcare education. Um, uh, Dr. Debra. Uh, see, uh, from an industry industry perspective, I'll, I'll tell you uh, how we coordinated with the universities during this COVID uh, using this 5G. There is already a service provider in India who is called as ACT Fiber Optics. Uh, this um, fiber optic um, uh, service provider used 5G to stream, uh, you know, the classes which had the laboratories also to be live uh, sh uh, shared across the students who were all studying from home. So uh, even when they are at home, they still had the opportunity to go through what happened in the laboratories. That happened in Indian universities, in some of the Indian universities. I can't say the name because it is uh, so uh, confidential. Otherwise, uh, you know, things that couldn't happen during the COVID lockdown still happened using 5G. I can also say something about our university. We have also a lot of uh, presentation for our students because we had no possibilities to do a real surgeries, uh, uh, so-called cold program. Uh, we couldn't do it because of the COVID-19 pandemics. And uh, we had a lot of interventions uh, using like, uh, webinars like this for students where we had uh, presentations on the like network, like this uh, class presentations and presenting the, uh, uh, the surgical interventions that we uh, recorded earlier. And then uh, we showed to the students because it was really hard. We used the technology uh, on this way uh, to maintain, I would say to maintain uh, uh, the flow of information for students because I know they, are, uh, they have a lack of knowledge in the last two years a lot of our residents in, uh, for example, in my ENT surgery department, they are unsatisfied because they didn't, uh, they didn't have possibility to operate. Uh, it was locked down here. We have, uh, we had real problems uh, with functioning, and we used the uh, technology to, uh, at least, to inform the students, to inform the residents about uh, the knowledge which they would uh, get that we had the real time and uh, real life uh, interventions. Uh, there was a problem about that. Yeah, adding to the, Dr. Joseph, uh, Dr. Debra, the thing is there, there are two types of uh, you know, uh, edu education that went on through 5G. One was synchronous and asynchronous. Both were possible due, due, with the use of 5G because it had a better streaming. 
compared to the 4G. 4G had a latency uh, which was more, more than in a few milliseconds, whereas 5G was less than one millisecond. So that was the great problem, you know, benefit we had with the 5G. Thank you. Yeah, uh, any other question? There was a question in the chat and I, I'm seeing one of my students' hands um, is raised, Derek Rose, and another of my students asked whether or not the, your students were able to actually interact with the 5G technology. And then you have a question from Derek Rose, his hand is raised. See, 5G technology were used by students, you know, but what they did was they used more for downloading films. <laughs> okay, rather than the real use of, uh, you know, education that happened because the stretch was there during that COVID time. And uh, not all uh, service providers, mobile service providers did 5G technology uh, transmission. Uh, that is why I said about uh, ACT, ACT gave, whereas uh, even Geo came up to 5G. Uh, the, the, the Reliance Group, but other, th other uh, service providers did not come. So those people who had this connectivity had the benefit of it. I mean, the, from, from all university, I mean, in Turkey, I mean, the, the students who want to interact with us, actually, they could open their video and interact and talk with us. Or if they have a questions, uh, we could answer, we could send them the case study or show them the cases over the video. But the main uh, things that we see that some of them, even they are online, but in reality, uh, they, they, they didn't uh, follow the, the classes. Uh, I mean, there are some uh, problems uh, during this education we have met. So I think the face-to-face the -face, uh, education may be uh, uh, more beneficial from uh, all university. I mean, the interaction is a problem. Some of them, they, they do, they want, but some, uh, uh, they, they don't want. I mean, just they close their camera because they say uh, they don't have enough the uh, internet and... Uh... Yes, that's my question. Um, okay. 5G is just being uh, evolving, Debra. Uh, not every okay. uh, country or every geography has the uh, benefit of 5G. We are all spread up to uh, 3G, 4G only. 5G is evolving. 5G is uh, only with few people. Okay. I think you have one last question from Derek Rose. His hand is raised. Uh, Derek, you can go ahead. Yes. Good, good day, everyone. So my main question has to do with the access rate and what was the technology that the students access the educational platforms from? See, there's nothing called, uh, this is the, you know, um, you know, network you need to use. See, it all depends on students use mostly their mobile network, their mobile phones. Their mobile phones were maximum only up to 4G or 4.3G. That's where the, the you know, maximum limit came. 4.3G is an LTE, long-term evolution. It is not equi equivalent to that of a 5G. Okay, 5G has... You know, better lat latency, cost uh, availability, better use of a, uh, a ba battery, and all those stuff happen. And you have 10 GPBS. Within a second, you have 10 gigabytes per second of transfer. That was not possible with you know, a 4G. So 4G was the best opportunity available to them. They used it. That had a problem of streaming. So what they had is better than having a synchronous learning, they all went with asynchronous learning. That is, you capture a video and see it later, not face to face, to face like what we are having. See, they, when I talk and you listen, there is a gap in few seconds. I'm also not using 5G. I'm using only 4G. Okay, when you use a 5G, that gap will be less. That will be of one millisecond. That, that is the thing which is required for medical. That is for assuring the communication gap is not there. Whereas for education, you don't need such a kind of a uh, technology requirement. But though we had it in India, we had a few uh, you know, service providers gave, but not everyone. If I, I uh, can add something. 
uh, here, uh, ask how a student can uh, try. Here is a lot of uh, isol isolated uh, uh, 5G uh, base stations. Uh, and uh, in that case, uh, here is there is a, a very very fast uh, download and uh, uh, internet connection. But a full 5G network is uh, when we have a lot of uh, base stations and when we going by car, ambulance, ambulance vehicles, and when uh, uh, we have a lot of uh, covering, where we have very very fast handover. Uh, between base stations, then uh, 5G will, will be in the full uh, full strength. Uh, if it is, if you have just one base station, so it is uh, it is very good, but still is not not full 5G network for for experience uh, and for learning. Okay, thank you. I think we have one question in the in the chat. One of my students wanted to know if there are any disadvantages to using 5G technology. Uh, can you repeat, Debra? Are there any disadvantages or challenges oh. to using 5G okay. technology? See, if for uh, disadvantages are many because uh, it all depends. If you don't have, you can complain. So uh, there were a lot of complaints, uh, uh, you know, because the better streaming was there with few and others were not. It's, it was almost like a digital divide. Uh, you know, if you have 5G, you are better placed. But not everyone is having 5G, but there are rumors spread around 5G. Like, you know, the telephone tower, uh, the micro mobile tower, they said the sparrows die, the birds die, uh, you know, the radiations are more. You know, all these rumors were spread across 5G. And, um, uh, you know, in India, since China was the one which had first used 5G, you know, there was a lot of uh, negative um, uh, talk over 5G. Uh, you know what? Uh, nothing is true. Uh, you know, every uh, technology has its own pros and cons. And uh, as we grow, we have to face how, how to come over because we don't know whether uh, whatever rumors are being spread is true. Uh, as of now, we are using 5G through, uh, you know, um, through broadband networks. That is where the uh, wired networks. So for us, as of now, we are having 5G, but not through mobile network, which is yet to come in India. Okay, thank you. Uh, an interesting question. And uh, I can now mention that uh, here is one problem. For example, there is no TDSTL TV because the overlapping of uh, 5G spectrum. And we lost uh, TV broadcasting, for example, one is these under the advantages. And now uh, we have just uh, digital TV, for example. And uh, here is probably many, many disadvantages, but uh, much more uh, is there is much, much there are much, much, much more uh, advantages. Yeah. yeah. And always we are focused on, on uh, advantages and about the uh, health uh, impact of uh, human body. And uh, we have to know that the specter of uh, uh, 5G. Uh, can make uh, impact on human body just uh, like warming uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, make more temperature for our body. Our body. Uh, and uh, if we keep uh, uh, several meters uh, far from uh, base, sta base stations, we will not have problems uh, with the uh, warming of our body. Also, we have to know that the uh, uh, 5G spectrum uh, cannot dis destroy molecules or atoms or uh, DNA. Uh, it is impossible uh, because uh, it uh, must be uh, ultraviolet uh, radiation and uh, a much more, more higher uh, spectrum than, than this. So uh, here is much, much more uh, advantages. As we, call, as we saw, uh, or almost all problems uh, with uh, IoT uh, and uh, uh, application uh, of IoT, you know, for example, today we saw in uh, yeah, health, uh, will be resolved or easily resolved by, by 5G network. So. Yeah. Is there agree. anything else? Yeah, man. Yeah. So we are very grateful to all the speakers for putting so much effort in guiding the audience despite their busy schedule. All the sessions were highly informative. Now every participant is aware of the smart and sustainable applications, 5G towards smart health. A big thank you to the organizing team. Looking forward to similar kind of association with you ahead as well. 
participants um, feedback link will be emailed to you very soon i request everyone to give union feedback and uh, this is the end of today's session so thank you all for attending take care and have a wonderful day ahead thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you very much thank you bye thank you thank you thank you very much thank you very much all thank you for having us today Best regards to all of you. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Mira, Edwin. Thank you, Mira. Uh, thank you, Eva. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Shani. Thank you, Pooja, uh, Pooja Jain. Thank you, Shashuna. Thank you, Amila. Thank you, Biswas. Thank you, Kolak. Thank you, Lata Murthy. Thank you, Jagan. Uh, Thank you, Debra. Amit, thank you, Diane. Thank you all. I'm closing the session. Thank you all. Thank you all for your time. Bye.